Our universe is alive with a wide variety of unimaginably large explosions that appear to us as just faint blips on the night sky. They are one moment, gone the next. One of the fastest and most mysterious types of cosmic explosions are the phenomena called gamma ray bursts, or GRBs for short. In the space of just milliseconds to maybe a couple of hours, the GRB fires off beams of light with a total energy of around 10 to the power of 46 joules. That's a 1 followed by 46 zeros. To try and fail to put this colossal amount of energy in context, 10 to the power of 46 joules is about 10 to the power of 30 megatons of TNT. In comparison, the combined energy of humanity's entire nuclear arsenal is about 1500 megatons. So the energy released by a GRB is 10 to the power of 43 times larger than all the terrible destructive power humanity possesses. What's that? That comparison was utterly useless? Okay, so let's try another one. The energy released in mere moments by a GRB is equivalent to the total energy our sun will emit over the course of its entire 10 billion year lifetime. How about this time? Do you have a feel for the amount of energy involved now? No? Well, me neither. These energies are simply inconceivable. The best any of us can do is just understand that it's big. Unlike supernova, where the energy from the explosion is emitted in all directions, the energy of a GRB is concentrated into two beams that travel off in opposite directions. Given the extreme amount of energy involved, anything caught in a nearby GRB beam will have a pretty unpleasant time. Death would come at the speed of light. The surface of any planet caught in a beam would be sterilized under the extreme gamma ray radiation, but some have suggested that instead the inhabitants would become rather irritable and green as a new planet hulk forms. Either way, life would be over for everything inside of this beam. Fortunately though, for pretty much every living thing in the universe, gamma ray bursts are very rare, and their beams are very narrow, so you're very, very unlikely to be blasted by a nearby GRB pointing straight at you. Every GRB we've seen has been millions to billions of light years away from us, which of course pose no danger to us. Only our telescope systems, like the Swift and Fermi space telescopes, can routinely pick up on the few gamma rays that reach us from these distant death beams. But what makes these extreme death beams? They do come from galaxies far, far away, so could they be death stars? Well, yes, but also no. Instead of death stars, it's more like dead stars. There are a few different mechanisms that we know of that can make GRBs and all revolve around the death or dead remnants of stars. We've seen some GRBs coincide with core collapse supernova, so the death of giant stars can actually make them. Others have been associated with black holes doing their strange black hole things and one was famously detected from the merger of two neutron stars that also made gravitational waves that were observed by LIGO, and as well as a kilonova that was observed by pretty much every professional telescope in existence. So there is no shortage of extreme phenomena that can make gamma ray bursts, which is in part why they're so challenging to understand. Every new GRB discovered helps us understand what makes them, and of course the extreme physics behind their formation. To observe a GRB though, first the geometry must be lined up, and second you need to catch it in the brief moments that it's visible, and take an awful lot of images during that time. Oddly enough, a telescope built to discover planets around distant stars is actually pretty useful for observing gamma ray bursts and their afterglows. In a recent paper that was led by Crystal and Smith, we used observations from the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, to study a GRB. We could do this because TESS images an enormous section of the sky every 30 minutes, so it was able to catch the afterglow of GRB 1910-16A. 
And since Tess observes in red light, it didn't see the gamma rays, rather the light emitted from material around the GRB that was energized by the beam. What we found was that in the space of just a few hours, Tess watched the GRB appear, then disappear forever. This plot here is called a light curve, and it shows us exactly what Tess saw. A patch of space rapidly brightened, and then faded away to obscurity after just a few hours. With these observations from TESS, along with data from the Swift and Fermi space telescopes, we were able to calculate some properties of GRB 1910-16a. Like I mentioned before, GRBs are far away, and this one is really far away, about 94 billion light years away from us. And since it's so far away, the GRB actually blew up an extremely long time ago, about 11 and a half billion years ago or just 2 billion years after the Big Bang. So light from GRB 1910-16a has been traveling across the universe for two and a half times longer than the Earth has even existed. And to those photons, no time has passed at all. But this was just the first gamma ray burst detected by TESS. And since TESS watches so much of the sky, we expect to see about one to two every year. And at the start of this year, in February, my research group got pretty excited because TESS observed its second bright GRB. Fast forward two months, I finally got the data from TESS and looked to see if we could find our gamma ray burst. And what did I find? Nothing. It turned out that TESS stopped taking data while this GRB happened. So although it was right where TESS was looking, we have nothing, no data at all. So that was pretty disappointing, but the universe is under no obligation to play nice. This disappointment aside, the first GRB that we have a published paper on now is still really cool. That research was led very much by Crystal and Smith, who did an incredible job with the analysis. I've put a link to the paper in the description. And for this paper, my role was to reduce the test data to get the gamma ray burst signal out of all of the other junk. If you want to explore the data along with the analysis tools I've developed to analyze test data for transients, I've also put a link to a GitHub repository and a Google Collab Python notebook in the description. Feel free to mess around with it, and if you break my code or have questions about the paper, please let me know in the comments. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'm hoping that we get lucky and see another bright gamma ray burst with Tess sometime soon.